It is important that all ministers show reverence and respect during the liturgy. At the beginning of the Mass, once the priest gives you the ready to go, the first acolyte, who is the cross-bearer, walks slowly down the main aisle. When they are to the second mark or halfway down, then the second acolyte begins walking with hands folded at all times. They will be followed by the deacon or one of the lectors carrying the book of the Gospels and finally the presider. Notice that the cross-bearer goes just slightly to the right as they enter the church holding the cross. The other acolyte goes slightly to the left, leaving room for one to two people in the middle. There is no need to go to the outside corners anymore as acolytes. Once the priest meets the acolytes, the priest will genuflect. Both acolytes will bow their heads. At that point, the cross-bearer continues to carry the cross held reverently as high as possible to the stand, which is around the corner in the back. And the second acolyte walks to their chair, which would be closest to the priest, since the second acolyte is in charge of holding the book and ringing of the bells. At the beginning of Mass, the acolytes will continue to hold their hands at all time, folded reverently, or having their hands on their laps when they are seated. The Mass begins as normal. The priest will begin with the sign of the cross. Depending on the season, there will be a gloria or a penitential rite. But when the priest says, let us pray, the acolyte who's in charge of the book and the bells will come and grab the Roman Missal and hold it in front of the priest, and the priest will open it to the appropriate place, pray the opening prayer, and then when he concludes and we all say amen, the acolyte will take the book, place it back on the stand, and return to their seat and be seated. The acolytes, for the most part, should always watch what the congregation is doing, stand when they stand, sit when they sit, etc. After all of the readings of the Mass and the petitions are read, then the priest concludes, and then the offertory collection is taken up. At this time, the server who is in charge of the book will take the Roman Missal and take it to the altar. At this time, the second server will go to the back credence table and we begin to bring out the items. We will no longer be using the tray. The cross-bearer first brings out the linens, which in involves and includes the corporal as well as purificators. The second acolyte will then, after taking the book to the altar, go and to bring out the ciborium, which are the bowls that hold the host. Notice how the acolytes will bring everything out on the south side of the sanctuary and then return to the north side. So one at a time, each server will go and begin bringing things out. The first the linens and then the bowls with the host and then all of the chalices. Depending on the number of clergy, there will be different amounts of bowls and chalices for each mass. But the servers will just continue to go back and forth until all of the appropriate items are brought forward. Once everything is brought to the altar, then both servers immediately come back out to go down and receive the gifts with the priest. Whoever is bringing forth the gifts, the priest will take the items from them and will hand the water to one of the acolytes and the wine to another one of the acolytes. Remember, when the priest hands you this, that the ac acolytes should hold them from the bottom and never by the handle. And the handle should be pointed out so that the priest or the deacon can grab the water and the wine appropriately. So immediately the servers follow the priest or the deacon to the altar and they will stand on the south side of the altar. And then whenever the priest or the deacon takes the wine and then the water from the acolytes, as soon as that is finished, then both acolytes immediately return to the credence table and put the water and the wine back on the table and then we'll retrieve the necessary items used to, to wash the priest's hands, which would be the pitcher of water, the bowl, and the towel. And then they will proceed back to the altar where they will pour a small amount of water over the priest's hands, over the bowl. The priest will then take the towel and dry his hands, 
and then both acolytes will return all of the items to the credence table behind the cross. And then immediately both acolytes, as soon as they are finished, will come to their spot standing in front of the kneeler pad where the bells are located on the south part of the sanctuary. At this point, Mass continues, and at the appropriate time, when the people of the parish will kneel, when the consecration begins, then the acolytes kneel at the same time. Notice how the acolytes continue to have their hands folded in prayer at all times. So during the consecration, when the priest extends his hands over the elements, then the acolyte who is in charge of the bells will ring the bells one times three. So it'll sound like ding, ding, ding. And then as the priest takes the patent of the host and presents it to the people, after he elevates it slightly, the acolyte will ring the bells three times three. Ding, 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 ding. They do that first for the host. And then after... The priest takes the chalice and prays the prayers of consecration and lifts the chalice up. Then again, the acolyte rings ding, 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 ding. Then the Eucharistic prayer will continue as normal with the prayers that lead up to the singing of the great Amen. After the Amen, the entire congregation and the acolytes will stand for the praying of the Our Father. The acolytes again would have their hands folded in prayer at this time during the prayer, praying of the Our Father. When the Lamb of God begins to be sung, this is where the extraordinary ministers of Holy Communion will come forward and stand on the main level of the church on the north side of the altar. Again, this is after the sign of peace and immediately when the Lamb of God begins to be sung. Notice that they stand at the bottom level. The priest and the deacon will then consolidate any of the host in the ciborium. The priest does the final prayer in preparation for communion. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Immediately when the priest consumes the host, as soon as the priest consumes the host, then the extraordinary ministers come forward and purify their hands. So there's no need to wait until the priest consumes from the chalice. As soon as he consumes the host, please come forward and purify your hands. This would be the only time that you will need to purify. The priest will then present the body and blood to the deacon of present, and then either the priest or the deacon will come to give communion to all of the extraordinary ministers of Holy Communion. And then as soon as everybody has the ciborium that is needed for distribution to the people, everyone will go to their appropriate spots for the distribution of communion. As soon as the ministers leave the altar, then the servers will go and the one in charge of the book will take the book back to the stand. The other acolyte will then go to the credence table and will bring out the small cruet of water. This would be the same cruet that is brought forward during the offertory, not the one that's in the video. Once communion is finished, all of the ministers the priest, the deacon of present, and all of the extraordinary ministers of Holy Communion will bring the ciborium to the altar. We are again showing more reverence to the presence of the Blessed Sacrament. The acolytes will then join everybody back in the sanctuary as the priest or the deacon consolidates all of the precious body into the ciborium. And notice that as the priest will go to the tabernacle, everyone is standing in the sanctuary watching him do so. We're showing our reverence to the Blessed Sacrament 
And as the priest genuflects to the tabernacle, then everybody else will do a simple bow of the head, and then the people in the congregation will be seated. And at that time, the purification process begins. So the altar servers will stay at the altar, and the priest or the deacon will con continue to then purify all of the vessels. And as they do so, they will hand the purified vessels to the servers, who will then begin taking everything back to the credence table. And again, notice how the acolyte will always return on the north side of the cross, and then they will come back out to the altar on the south side. So just by one by one, depending on how many ciborium or bowls and chalices need to be purified at the altar, the acolytes will continue to take them back to the credence table and then come forward until everything, including all of the linens, are cleared from the altar and taken back to the credence table. Notice the reverence in which we fold the corporal and how everything is folded in. This is so that any particles of the precious body that have been placed on the corporal will be protected and kept inside rather than just thrown aside. Once everything is cleared from the altar again, the priest and the deacon if present will return to their chairs and the acolytes will return to theirs as well for some quiet prayer following communion. Once the priest stands and says, let us pray, the acolyte who is in charge of the book will come forward once again and hold the book in front of the presider who will open it to the appropriate page. Once the presider is finished with the prayer, then either he will close the book or the acolyte may close the book, return it to the table and return to their pew. When the priest does the final blessing of the people, then the cross bearer immediately goes to get the cross and stands by the other acolyte until the priest and the deacon make their move to the altar. The acolytes need to ideally go fast enough to beat the priest and the deacon down in front of the sanctuary. The cross bearer goes to the same spot where they were at the very beginning and the other acolyte goes to the same spot as well. When the priest or the deacon genuflex, the acolytes bow their heads and then begin to walk out reverently as in the beginning, spacing themselves out appropriately. Thank you so much for your service to Corpus Christi Catholic Church. Let us continue to show our reverence and respect for the Eucharist and the Blessed Sacrament. God bless.